Hi, Dr. Dave here to test Town Pyro Chalk and see how it compares to Master Chalk. Be sure to watch to the end where I summarize interesting conclusions. I have done many chalk tests over the years. If you want to watch past videos and see all previous results, visit the link in the video description. I won't go through detailed testing procedures in this video, but if you're curious, you can watch the past videos. Briefly, before every set of tests, I carefully clean the tip with a tip shaper. I also carefully and completely chalk the tip. I also carefully clean chalk marks off the cue ball before each shot. I position the cue in the same orientation with the shaft label pointing up to make sure the same part of the tip is hitting the cue ball with each shot. And for some tests, I aim the center of the cue at the edge of the red miscue limit circle on the elephant practice ball to ensure the same amount of side spin for each shot. The first test is for a number of hits before a miscue. Here is an example set of shots with Master Chalk. Even without chalking before each shot, Master Chalk persists on the tip from one shot to the next. If you chalk properly before each shot when playing, as you should, this feature really isn't important. But if you sometimes forget to chalk, or if you don't chalk carefully or completely, chalk persistence on the tip could be helpful. Here, it took 12 shots before the chalked tip became ineffective. Here's the same test with Town Pyro. Exact results with a test like this will depend on the amount of chalk you apply, the type of tip being used, the consistency of your stroke, and the condition of the tip at the cue ball contact point. But the important result here is that, as with Master Chalk, Town Pyro persists on the tip even after many shots. Here, it lasted for 8 hits. Again, the exact number isn't as important as the fact that Chalk does persist on the tip from one shot to the next, even if you don't chalk, which you shouldn't not do. The next test is a miscue limit test, where I hit many shots using what I thought was maximum side spin. Some of the shots were miscues, and many were not. With Master, the tip contact point for the best shot was right on the red circle, which is why the red circle is there. If you hit farther out on the ball, a miscue results. Here, you can see the miscue chalk mark right on the edge of the red circle. The results were very similar with Town Pyro. The next test is for cling, also known as skid, kick, or a bad hit. Cling is an excessive amount of throw caused by a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point. Here are some examples from my previous chalk test video. With clean ball surfaces, the 13 heads to the corner as expected. However, with a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point, cling causes a miss. Here, with clean ball surfaces, the cue ball follows forward as expected. But with a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point, cling causes the cue ball to hop and lose much of its top spin. Here it is in slow motion. For the chalk cling test, I hit into a frozen combination with a 45 degree cut angle. With clean ball surfaces at the contact point, the ball gets thrown an expected amount. This is called cut-induced throw, or CIT, and it is due to a normal amount of friction between the balls. If the friction were less, for example by applying saliva to the contact point, there would be less throw. The amount of throw depends on shot speed. It is more at slower speed, and less at faster speed. So, when doing throw and cling tests, it is very important to use a consistent speed from one shot to the next. Here is the shot speed I plan to use for all of the cling tests, with the object ball bouncing a diamond off the end rail and the frozen cue ball returning close to the center of the table. Here is the cling test for master chalk. First, I hit a firm stop shot to create a chalk mark on the cue ball. Then I freeze the cue ball to the object ball with the chalk mark at the contact point. As expected, the cling creates much more throw than before. This is where Town Pyro is very different from Master Chalk. Town Pyro does not stick to the cue ball very easily. I did my best to position the cue ball with a hint of chalk mark at the contact point. 
The small trace of town pyro did cause some cling, but not nearly as much as Master Chalk did. To attempt to get a more prominent chalk mark from town pyro, I tried manually tapping the cue ball on a heavily chalked and softer tip. It still left only a small hint of chalk on the surface. Again, when I carefully placed the slight chalk mark at the contact point, it did cause cling, but still not as much as master. Here's another example using town pyro on the soft tip, again attempting to place the faint chalk mark at the contact point. This time, there was no clang at all, only the normal or expected amount of throw. I should point out that the town pyro did stick some to the elephant practice ball used in the other test, but the elephant practice ball surface was specifically designed to help hold chalk marks so you could more easily see after a hit where the cue ball was struck. When I saw how little town pyro stuck to the cue ball, I wondered if it might also come off the tip easily. With the earlier number of shots before a miscue test, I was hitting the same part of the tip on the cue ball, so it was possible the first hit was helping to embed some of the chalk particles in the tip for the subsequent hits. So here, I decided to try hitting the chalked tip on both sides of the ball, starting with the right. Without chalking again, I hit the other side of the ball with the cue in the same orientation to see if the chalk remained effective on the other side of the tip. It did. So again, town pyro does not stick to the cue ball very well, which is good, but it does stick to the tip, which is also good. Here's a summary of the results from this video. Town pyro and master perform very similarly with persistence on the tip and miscue limit. So one would not expect any performance differences concerning chalk effectiveness and the maximum spin that can be applied. However, town pyro does not stick to the cue ball very easily. This is a good thing, because there will be less chances for cling to occur. And if it did occur, it would be less severe than with other chalks like master. Cling does not happen very often with master chalk, but when it does, it can cause a missed shot and possibly a lost game or a lost match. So we should do whatever we can to avoid it. Town pyro is better than master in this regard. As I have mentioned before, it is definitely a bad idea to use cosmetic grade chalks like Kamui and Blue Diamond that stick to and persist on the cue ball much too easily. This can cause more frequent and more severe cling, not only for you, but also for your opponents. Town Pyro is the best chalk I have tested to date concerning likelihood for or severity of cling. <laughs> Thank you.